What's going on guys, Bob Roach from RoachTechnology.com here with a pretty quick video for you of how to update your Hackintosh to Mountain Lion. This just came out today, July 25th, so I assume you're all pretty excited about it. And fortunately, the folks over at Tony Mac have made this a very easy and seamless process. It's very, very similar to Lion. All you want to do is simply head over first to the Tony Mac forums, go to the downloads, and of course you'll need Mountain Lion. Uh, this is a new version 1.5, so go ahead and get that. That will start to download. I already have it. And the second thing you're going to need is obviously well, your copy of Mountain Lion. So we're going to go ahead and head over to the App Store. I'm sure we'll see banners for it everywhere. So you can see it's right here and right here. I'll go ahead and click that banner. So we're going to click 1999, Buy App. Enter in those valuable credentials and go ahead and sign in. And as you can see, the download has begun. Now it is worth mentioning that please buy your software. If you go ahead and go to you know the Pirate Bay or go download a torrent somewhere, things will work different for you. Not only that, you're also not guaranteed that it'll be virus free. Someone could put some crap in there. Also, I mean it's 20 bucks. There's really no reason to not buy it. It's definitely worth the price. So if you're having weird issues simply because you didn't buy it from the App Store or you know anything of the like, I really will not help you. Also, this upgrade process will work from anything from 10.6.6 .6 and up. You do not have to be on Lion in order to upgrade to Mountain Lion. Actually, I believe they've pulled Lion from the App Store altogether. So as long as you're running Snow Leopard and 10.6.6 .6 .6 or later, basically as long as you see this icon right down here in the App Store, you can update to Mountain Lion. And fortunately for you guys, if you're one of those people that's having some problems on Snow Leopard, then updating the Mountain Lion is actually going to be a very cheap and very good choice for you simply because they've vastly increased the hardware support. As Macs and PCs have come closer and closer together in terms of hardware, OS X is now supporting more hardware with every release. So Mountain Lion will definitely be a very good move for you. So with that said, I'm going to go ahead and let this download and I'll be right back. So about 4 gigabytes later, Mountain Lion is successfully downloaded and it downloaded it right to your applications folder. Now real quick, I would definitely take the time to open up your applications folder and back this guy up because I believe once you install Mountain Lion, this will no longer be here even if you just simply like do an upgrade, even on a real Mac, this will no longer be here. At least I believe that's how it was with Lion. So real quick, also just to make sure if something goes wrong, you don't have to re-download it, simply just come over here copy it and move it to say a different drive just somewhere that you will never have to re-download it again but anyway a quick tip out of the way now that we have mountain lion downloaded what you want to do is prepare an 8 gigabyte or higher flash drive and or disk partition so what we want to do is come up here to disk utility and once that opens you'll see my drive is right here it is indeed a flash drive this has line on it so we're going to say goodbye to line we're simply going to erase but if you're setting something up for the first time you want to come over here to partition We'll just do one partition, I'll call it UniBeast again. And we'll come down here to options. If it's set as GUID, make sure it's MBR. GUID you want for regular OS 10 partitions, but for this UniBeast flash drive, we're gonna use MBR. And now we're simply gonna have it use up all eight gigabytes and we'll partition it. So the flash drive has finished formatting and now what we wanna do is simply run UniBeast. Now, if you don't have, for whatever reason, uh, if you don't have the mountain line in your application folder, this will just give you a big old warning and it won't even run. So now that we're here, it's all good. Continue, continue, continue. Of course you're going to agree. Now, make sure that you don't leave it here. Even if for some reason this is a green uh, little check mark and it wants you to let you do it, just don't you know, make things bad for you. It'll probably ruin your installation. So what you want to do is just come over here and make sure you select UniBeast or whatever that partition or flash drive you just set up is. Now, simply click continue. If you want legacy support, like it says down here for 1156 motherboards that don't enable rate matching hub and BIOS, then you'll simply want to do that. If you have an 1156 motherboard, or if you have a laptop, which I never ever recommend doing, but if you do want to try to Hackintosh a laptop, then by all means, here's your choice to do that. Now we're just going to simply click continue, install, enter my, um, I guess, extremely, like super James Bond secure password, and let this do its thing. I assume this will take anywhere from, I'd say, 10 to 20 minutes based on the flash drive speed and performance. So I'll go ahead and let this do this thing, and I'll be right back. All right, and after a couple minutes, you'll get a message that looks something like this. So now simply just click close. And to make sure everything worked, go ahead and preview this and quick look. Make sure that there's about three gigs left. It probably won't be exactly three gigs like mine is, but depending on this and depending on that, uh, it could be right around there. So just make sure that it's at least using like five or so gigs, not like 2K, because if, if it finished really fast and it's using like two kilobytes, then obviously something went wrong. So after making sure, just simply plug this flash drive into any USB port, or if you're using a partition, simply boot from that partition, and we'll go ahead and install Mountain Lion. 
Actually, one more thing before installing. I know I've recommended you guys the AMD Radeon HD 6850 and the 6870, but the only problem is with Mountain Lion, they're a little bit more complicated to get working. It's nothing that's very hard. You just have to know exactly what to do. So like I said, it's an easy fix, so I'm just going to show you how to do it real quick because I know this is a very common card among my audience. So in the description, there's an application called Show Hidden Files. What you want to do is simply run that. And you want to show to special files, aka the hidden files. Now you can simply uh, minimize that real quick here. And now on your Unibeast drive, what you want to do is navigate to System, Library, Extensions. Now in here, there's going to be a kext file or a kernel extension called ati6000controller.kext. What you want to do is back this up somewhere. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, do a Command C and we'll put it, say, in Media. And now that it's backed up, what you want to do is simply come in here and delete it all together and empty the recycle bin. And that's what you have to do. For whatever reason, the 6000 series GPUs just need to have this extra fix. I don't think any other series of graphics cards needs it. But at the time of this video, this is required for AMD 6000 series GPUs. If you don't have an AMD 6000 series GPU, then you obviously don't have to worry about this. But if you do, now we can proceed with the installation. And here we are, the machine is just now booting up. Now if you're on a gigabyte motherboard, what you're going to want to do is hit the F12 key, or I'm not sure if it's the same key on the Asus motherboards, but regardless, you want to go into your boot options menu, and you simply want to boot from that USB flash drive. So there you go, once that screen comes up, you're going to hit F12, and then give it a couple seconds, and you'll be greeted with a boot options menu, such as that. So if you have yours on a different hard drive or on a partition or something, you can just go from there and pick and do whatever have you. Or in my case, we're going to come down here and go to USB HDD and that'll bring you to the bootloaders menu. Now if you did what I had to do and you had to delete that ATI 6000 kext, what you're going to want to do is boot with graphics enabler set to no. Graphics with a capital G and no space enabler with a capital E equals no space no with a capital N with no space. Just like that and we're going to hit enter. And after a few moments you should get an Apple logo that looks something like this. And I'll give this another minute or so and we'll go into the actual installer. And as you can see, we're at the installer. And obviously it's gonna look like crap. It's gonna be a horrible resolution because we're booting with graphics enabled or set to no. But that's not a big deal. We'll go ahead and sort that out later. So here we are at the screen. We're gonna click continue and agree. Now this is the point where I believe if you really want to, if you're running line, you can just uh, click here and do an upgrade. However, I can't confirm that. I haven't tried it. Theoretically, it should work because that's basically what you do on a real Mac, but I never recommend doing just an upgrade even on a real Mac on any system regardless of the computer and the operating system. I always like to do a fresh installation. So in that case, I'm going to come up here to Utilities, come to Disk Utility, and we're going to find my drive on the left here. That would be this guy here. Click Erase, and it's erasing. Goodbye, Lion. Now, come over here to Macintosh SSD or whatever your boot drive is called and click install. Now I would assume this would take anywhere from 5 to 10 minutes or so, so I will be back then. Alright, and after a couple minutes we'll be greeted with the screen that looks something like this, so now we're simply just going to reboot. And now once you reboot, you're going to want to make sure you boot once again from the flash drive because the hard drive currently does not have any bootloader on it. And so once again we're going to hit F12, and that will take us into the boot menu, and once again you're going to boot from whatever drive that installation is on, whether it's a flash drive, hard drive, you name it simply boot from it. Here's the boot menu. Once again, I'm going to select USB HDD. Now once you get to the bootloader menu, you should have a new partition over here. Now instead of just hitting enter, since I have that 6000 series graphics card, it did not install any kernel extension for my graphics, so what we want to do is once again, boot graphics enabler equals no. So type it in all nice like, and we're going to hit enter. And that will boot us into Mountain Lion, like we all know and love. And once again, the resolution will look horrible, and that's because we're booted with the graphics enabler set to no function, but that's okay, we will fix this in just a second. So we're just going to set up everything like we normally would. I'm not even going to put this in right now because I don't think my Ethernet works, so I'm just going to go ahead and skip this. I'll do that later. Of course, we're going to agree to the very important uh, terms and conditions that we are indeed abiding by. And let's start using Mountain Lion. And here we go, we're brought up to the desktop. And now if you're like me and have an AMD 6000 card, to get those graphics working, you want to go ahead and run Show Hidden Files. Once again, we're going to show the hidden files. And now I'm going to go to wherever I backed up that kernel extension to. That'd be right here. Of course, we have to clean this up. And as you can see, I have it right here. And now what we're going to do is we're going to open up Terminal. Or if you have another way to just get to the root of the drive, go ahead and do it. But I'm simply going to do open space backslash and that'll bring you to the root of your boot drive as you can see up there we have Macintosh SSD now what you want to do is go to system library come down here to extensions 
and we're simply gonna paste that in, close all these windows, and now I'm gonna open up Multi Beast. All right, here we go, I'm gonna click through, and this is gonna highly depend on your system, but I'm just gonna go ahead and install a few things, namely a DSDT. Let's go ahead and select User DSDT. All right, I've selected everything I need to. I have my DSDT.AML file on the desktop, so now I'm just gonna click Continue. And the DSDT will install the bootloader and all the other kernel extensions will be put into place and everything will work all nice-like. Alright, and there's my links to Mac Ethernet driver, so we'll go ahead and install this. Close out of that. And by the way, I'm going to go ahead and hide all these special files. It's driving me nuts. Okay, so links to Mac has installed and now we're going to restart the computer. Okay, and now I'm removing my flash drive from the computer, so now it should boot up all by itself. And here we are at the Chimera screen. Macintosh SSD is counting down. There's a drum roll in the background somewhere in the world, I assume, and it's booting up. And as you can see, that actually booted very fast. It was even it was barely even at that little spin menu. So we're gonna input the extremely secure password, and here you go. We have a Hackintosh running Mount Mine with full graphics acceleration and whatever have you. So we're going to set up the keyboard real quick, nothing big, and come up here to about this Mac. And we'll zoom in on this a little bit for you guys. So coming down here, we have 3.2 gigahertz Core i7. All 12 gigs of my memory is recognized. Bring this down a little. So as you can see, the AMD Radeon HD 6850 is fully detected now that we've put that kernel extension back. And we're booted with graphics neighbor set to yes, as you can see, because we are indeed loading a frame buffer. And by the way, shout out to... Geek Platter on Twitter says you can't wait for the tutorial. Well, guess what? Now you're in the tutorial. That's some like tutorialception for you. So that's pretty much it, guys. Uh, the only, really only curveball that you guys should run into is that little bit with the graphics card. But if you have maybe an older GPU or maybe like a 5000 series or maybe some of these NVIDIA cards will work a little bit better for you. But if you have a AMD 6000 series card, it really is not a hard fix. However, you just kind of have to know to do it. So that's pretty much it. I really have nothing else to show you guys. Thank you very much for watching. I'm at CPUKin on Twitter. Also be sure to check out RoachTechnology.com and at RoachTechnology on Twitter. I apologize this video got up a little bit late. I had to actually re-download Mount Mine. I got a bad download. Some crazy issues were happening. But regardless, I hope it helps some of you guys out there. And thank you very much for watching.